Welcome to the Wisdom of Solomon, selection from the Books of the Apocrypha, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. The Apocrypha is a group of ancient books with uncertain authorship whose contents overlap parts of the Christian and Hebrew Bibles. The term Apocrypha means secret, hidden, or non-canonical. Indeed, these books have been considered sacred, with a more advanced teaching than would normally be made available to the general public. The Apocrypha includes 15 books, most of which were influenced by the Jewish canon of the Old Testament. Today, apocryphal books remain part of the Holy Bible in the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches, while other Christian traditions still value them for religious study. One of the Apocrypha books is the Wisdom of Solomon, in which wisdom is personified, such is the emphasis placed on that virtue. Written in ancient Greek, the Wisdom of Solomon is believed to have been composed not by the beloved King Solomon himself, but in tribute to him by a Jew from Alexandria, Egypt, centuries later. Today we will explore an enthralling selection from the Apocrypha book, The Wisdom of Solomon, in regards to the true virtues of life being the real means of approaching it as wisdom is elaborated on as treasured goal for us to achieve. Wisdom is referred to as she and is being described as an ultimate richness of life. The Wisdom of Solomon He, the Lord, shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of a helmet. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield his severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword, and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right-aiming thunderbolts go abroad, and from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bow, shall they fly to the mark. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away. Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill-dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because, being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he, which is Lord over all, shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favourably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love, and love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption, and incorruption maketh us near unto God. 
therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honour wisdom that ye may reign for evermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive, therefore, instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air, and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature, and the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes, and that with cares, for there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life, and the like going out. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. All good things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. I learned diligently, and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches. For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of God, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. God hath granted me to speak as I would, and to conceive as is meet for the things that are given me because it is he that leadeth unto wisdom, and directeth the wise. For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship. For he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely to know how the world was made, and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, and midst of the times, the alterations of the turning of the sun, and the change of seasons, the circuits of years, and the positions of stars, the natures of living creatures, and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds, and the reasonings of men, the diversities of plants, and the virtues of roots, and all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. Wise viewers, we thank you for your kind presence for today's words of wisdom.